So and, and, and Ed supplies all those parts. We um, do, yeah. For yep. for for uh, Husqvarna's Gas Gas KTM. And what, what other? Suzuki, we could actually get you any manufacturer out there. So mm -hmm. um, there are some suspensions that keep us a little limited, like Fox, we can't, they're very limited on what they release out. So um, a lot of times we actually have to, if it's a really major job, we do have to send it out to Fox to, to have them do do that work. But Got uh, you. We, yeah, we can definitely do it. And again, I have to ask this every time, for those that are that that, that are uh, members of, of uh, dirt bike communities mm -hmm. or have been you know watching uh, the, the the videos that Edge and community have been doing, can if can when they come in and mention that yeah, that uh, they you know they're either a member of, of community the dirt bike community sure you sure. have some. I'm um, sure we could find a direction we could definitely help them out on that. So yeah, okay. I mean, you're, all of you are part of the family, so we want to make sure that you're feeling comfortable with and and, and get get a good uh, a good good rate for uh, what you're what you're shopping for. So we could definitely help you out. So I can come and just say, hey, yeah. I watch you guys uh, at uh, community uh, dirt bike community with with Rob and and Randy. Um, I'm, that's all they have to mention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us know. Let you, let us know that you're part of the community. I'm I'm, I'm sure we can get you a good good uh, good uh, workout on on uh, getting you all set up and good pricing and everything like that. Awesome. Too. Randy, do you have a comment? Yeah, one thing you know <clears throat> maybe touch this is that you know you spend a lot of money on these bikes. The majority of the time we see people that never do anything with their suspension, and then their buddies tell them they need to go spend seven thousand on their suspension, but no one actually uses the suspension that comes with. Yeah, that, that great comment, Randy. Yeah, and that, and that's really unfortunate too, is because they do get caught into kind of this trap of everyone thinks, well, I've I've got to spend more money to fix it, where it's really not. A lot of it's just tweaking with your clickers and setting your preload to a proper setting on it, and, mm -hmm. and just getting the bike to where it's working right for you. Um, I've I've got buddies, they're pro riders, and they ride on stock suspension. They they don't have to go bonkers and spend six, eight thousand dollars on a full blown crazy suspension on it. And, uh, but yeah, you can get, I mean, the factory suspension on, on these things is pretty amazing. So. Well, I, I think that kind of uh, uh, proved it, right? Just, I mean, I didn't, I haven't even touched it. Nice, nice. Good so, deal. and we came here, it seems to be perfect. So Good deal, good deal. Well, let's talk about the rear shock because there's a lot of adjustment on there too as well. So on the rear shock, we already talked about adjusting the preload on this and getting that, that ride height set to where the bike is elevated properly. Well, back here, you've got a lot of, uh, lot of adjustment as well. These two upper clickers and, and rotating uh, knobs here, those are your compression adjusters. So on your bike, you actually have the brass screw is for low speed compression and the big nut with the riding on it, that's for high speed compression. Now, a lot of people get confused on that thinking it's wheel speed and it's really not. It's actually the action of the shock. So maybe a good mental picture for uh, say low speed compression, maybe fluttery little whoops or that progressive G out when you're coming up to a jumper ramp. Usually it's that first inch and, oh, inch and a quarter, inch and a half a stroke on the shock that you're using. The high speed compression is those fast hits. Like maybe you're ripping down a trail, you hit a rock or a log in, in the middle of the trail, you're coming off a good jump, that sharp landing. Or even if you're at the start gate, poised and ready to launch out, that jumping on the gas and the bike squats really, really quick, those are all high speed actions in that shock. I do consider the low speed uh, compression adjuster, kind of the overall stiffness of the shock, how it feels. But the high speed are just, like I said, those are those fast hits in that shock. So, and then your rebound adjuster, typically you're gonna find that rebound adjuster down at the base of the shock, okay? So there again, these function just like our, our knobs on our bathroom sinks or these clicker adjustments right here. So let's talk about the high speed compression. If that, if that circuit feels a little soft or mushy when you're hitting those sharp hits or coming off a good sharp landing, to, to make that feel a little firmer, we're just gonna shut the water off by turning that adjuster in and closing that valve down a little bit, okay? We're just restricting the flow of fluid that goes through that valve, okay? The low speed adjustment like I said, that one, I kind of consider the overall stiffness of the shock, so, and, and maybe fluttery little whoops or that progressive G out. So if that circuit feels a little soft, like same thing, you're just gonna turn that adjuster in, restrict that flow going through that valve, and that'll make it feel a little firmer on that compression stroke, okay? Now on the rebound adjuster, 
down here at the base of the shock. If it feels like it's trying to pogo you out of the seat the whole time, that means the rebound's moving way too fast. And we've just got to turn that clicker adjuster in and close that valve down a little bit just to slow it down a little bit, okay? Um, or if it feels a little lazy on coming up, or it might even be coming up a little slow from the front end. Maybe it's coming up a little off balance, and I'll show you a trick on how to kind of uh, visually dial that in. Then you can back it out to where it pops up a little quicker for you, to where it's, everything's balanced and reacting properly for you. My best suggestion is, is write down your base settings, get your preload set, and uh, set your sag on your rear shock, and, and get your preload set up on your front. And that one's a little vague. You can usually go to a kind of a standard base setting and give you kind of an idea on that. Um, usually about 150 PSI on the air fork on, on these is pretty standard. But if you don't have any telltale rings, put a zip tie on there and then that'll give you a good visual cue. But write those base settings down and go out and do the same thing over and over again. Same bump, same jump, same turn, and keep doing that over and over again. But focus strictly on your high speed compression here and your compression adjuster up here. Might be a click or so here. If you've got them on both forks, remember to set them equally. Might be a little turn or so here. But once that's feeling pretty sorted out, then start focusing on your rebound. Okay, if you treat them like two different chapters in, in the day, then it's a lot easier to identify how the bikes are acting how you can make it your bike in that process. Question, Jeff. So when, when you're riding over kind of bump and, and whoops, small whoops and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and you you feel like your rear, rear uh, wheels are just kind of whopping all over like this? Sure, sure. What does that indicate? Usually that's your rebounds moving too fast. Mm -hmm. It's just because it, it'll set and it'll launch you out of that turn. So instead of compressing and just kind of setting a little bit on that height, what's going on is it sets in that turn and it tries to deflect out and that's why it's kind of shooting out. Yeah, it's kind of like, like a slide. fish tail. It's just, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So if you can slow that rebound down by closing that faucet off a little bit, that's all you're going to do is turn it in and slow that rebound down. Then it's going to stabilize a little bit more. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, like I said, usually what I'll do is I'll focus on the compression first, go hit some the same heavy bumps and just kind of get that felt out. And then I'll go, okay, that's feeling pretty sorted out. Now I'm gonna focus on my rebound adjusters. Now, like I said, if you kind of treat it like two different chapters or two different segments in the day, then you can really kind of pick out and identify what's happening in the bike and, and how you can change that in, in that process. So um, that's, that's my process on how I set my suspension up, especially when it's a, a new bike or I've changed the spring out or something, or, or maybe, I'm, like I said, I gained a, little pound, a couple pounds uh, during the winter time. I have to get a little more dialed in. Um, in my world, tires can make a, a big effect, especially on uh, supermoto tires, because I'm running a road race slick on those. So new from old, uh, old from new tires, they can have a little more cohesion on them. So that'll change things for me too. Okay, so, so is there an optimal uh, goal that you want to set as you ride? Um, so is, is, is the objective is to adjust it so that it'll ride smooth for you? or does different people like it differently? I mean, what I mean by that, an example would be, would a person, for example, say, well, you know what, I like it kicking, the switch, uh, um, you know, fishtailing, no, things like that. Awesome question, no. I, and this is actually what we run into a lot, is pe people inherently have a little bit of an ego. They don't want to admit, oh, maybe I'm a, a brand new rider and I'm getting, getting into this, or maybe I was riding a few years and I quit and I'm kind of getting back into it. Inevitably, this is always where it, where it happens, is you'll ask them when you're, when you're asking them spring rates, that type of thing, because you can order for pro riders, you can order for intermediate novice or, or novice rider, and every time, well, I'm, I'm a pro rider, I've, I've, been, I've been sailing this thing 15 feet, and we're really, you start talking to pro riders and they're launching 60, 70 feet over things. Well, then they get their suspension and it is way too stiff because they told whoever they ordered their suspension from that they're, oh yeah, I'm an awesome pro rider. And then they, they order those springs and, and that setup for there. Where I have a little, have a little integrity on saying and admit to where, okay, I'm maybe a little self recognition on where your actual riding skills are at. It's okay, no one's gonna ding you for it or anything like that. Because inevitably, we just want you to have the right suspension on your bikes and where you're gonna enjoy it more. And because gotcha. it's no fun when you're just skipping all over things and it's just loose and out of shape. And now some people prefer a little firmer ride and some people prefer a softer ride. It depends on what they're doing. If, uh, so so what in general, would the, 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 the novice 
would it be more beneficial for that person? Like myself, again, I'm using myself. Sure, sure. Would it be more beneficial for me as a novice to have my suspension a little bit soft? Definitely, definitely, because that's going to give you better handling. If that bike is set up way stiff, and it really kind of depends on the environment you're riding in too. Um, but if it's set up too stiff, like I said, if you're up doing hard enduro, it can deflect you right off the side of the mountain if you're not, not watching out or it can really put you into some hard situations. So you, you don't want the bike pliable to where it's going to work good for you as well. So um, that, that's ideal, uh, the goal is you want the bike to work for you as the pilot on the bike. I mean, we, we can put pro riders on the bike all day long and every time, oh, I want it stiffer, I want it more taut, because they're really working that suspension. They're jumping a lot higher, they're traveling a lot, a lot farther through the air. I'm, I'm no pro rider. I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty experienced. I teach motorcycle uh, techniques and all that on the track and this and that, but, but there's, there's some things that I don't set my suspension up just because of that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm asking this question from experience, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I like riding motorcycle. Mm -hmm. but I don't want to be kicked off of my bike no, either no, because no. I would lose interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, so you know, people, again, I'm, 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 I don't want to talk for other people, but I think it applies for, for you know, the novice. Maybe the recommendation is that, hey, start slow, yeah, make it a little yeah. soft. That way you learn how to ride to be a little bit better and get confidence exactly. um, before you even, you know. I didn't know that, you know, making it soft is gonna make me feel a little bit more comfortable, you know? Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah, that's why I brought it here. So I've learned a lot. Today. Yeah, totally, totally. Right. And I even ran into this when I was uh, um, teaching and racing road racing bikes. Is every time these cats would set up their bikes way too stiff, and then they're skittering around turns and everything. Well, we'd set it up, and then we'd get them on the bike, and they're like, "Wow, this is how it's supposed to feel. It feels way too soft to what I'm, I'm mm -hmm. used to." And then they'd go out, and their the bike was working perfectly for them. And, and it's the same thing on on dirt bikes, any any other type of bike. You want that suspension to be pliable and work for you. You don't want it so soft where it's just mushy mushy but that's one of the things we set up our preload on because mm -hmm. if you set your preload and you're you're set the ride height for the bike then the bike's always going to be suspended properly then mm -hmm. all you're doing is fiddling with valving on your compression and rebound to where it actually reacts and deflects and, and compresses into those bumps a little more properly. yeah and, and you know fortunately mm -hmm. i like riding motorcycles yeah right? yeah <laughs> i'm not a, I'm, I'm a novice but i like to ride it but you know i can i, I can just see other people that they want to get into the sport and they start riding and then it just kick in the maw. For sure. Right? For and, sure. and they would lose interest. And, and so I've no. actually seen a lot of people get discouraged from that because they didn't enjoy riding the bike. And it was just like, every time I ride this, it feels like it's just gonna buck me off everywhere. And right. I'm tired after I'm, I'm done riding it because it just beat me up all day. So yeah, if you can really get the suspension working for you, right, to where it's pliable and, and reactive, that helps out a lot too. Um, one little trick that you can uh, kind of do after you've kind of fiddled with things just in your garage is this is kind of a visual check and it, I'm kind of a shorter guy so this one's always kind of a challenge for me maybe getting up on a little block or something like that or if you got a big hefty friend you can get him over and do this and you can stand back and watch the bike visually. So what we're going to do is I'm going to compress the bike and we're going to watch how the bike comes up. Does the front end come up faster? Does the back end come up faster? Those kind of things. So and that's going to tell us on maybe the bike's coming up a little off balance. Maybe the back end on the rebound is moving too fast and the front end's come up a little slower or vice versa, something like that. So let's kind of see if we can get a visual out of this. That looked pretty even. Yeah, you're set up pretty nice on it. So yeah, I'd, I'd run and then I just tweak from there on it because your bike's coming up even and it's not coming up off balance. It's actually compressing evenly as well. So you can feel that out. So that's actually one of the things I've got to do on my super motorbike because I've had it all torn apart. But that's a good visual check. I've got a big buddy of mine. He actually does his compression from on my, my bike for me so I can stand back and get a good visual on it and just seeing how it comes up. And a lot of times you can kind of get look out in this area and kind of see the bike in your peripheral and you can see how it's coming up so that'll help you out as well and, and then you can okay maybe i need to speed my rebound up or slow it down a little bit on the back end or or vice versa on, on the front end too so that kind of kind of helps things get balanced out before you even go out play on the dirt and that way you've got a pretty good base setting from there too so well awesome gang i hope that helps out i hope that uh, kind of gave you some tidbits on uh, how to fiddle with this, this stuff and like i said 
Don't be afraid to fiddle with the suspension. It, every bike has a lot of adjustability. I mean, treat these things like a Swiss Army knife. They're not, they're not the manufacturer's bike anymore. They're not the dealer's bike anymore. They're your bike. So, so definitely take the opportunity to fiddle with them and, and really dial it in and customize it, make it, make it your own bike. That's one of the best things about, about riding motorcycles. So um, I hope that kind of clarifies some information up and uh, maybe uh, get you a little more excited about uh, getting out and fiddling with this stuff. And then you're gonna discover that once you've got a pretty good base setting, if you're going from hard enduro to desert to maybe a little more hard pack, you're usually only a few clicks or turns away from having that, that perfect ideal setting. So gang, I hope that helped out. Uh, awesome uh, chit-chatting with all of you. The questions were awesome. So uh, if you have any questions on it, feel free to uh, call us up at the Edge Power Sports and we can definitely uh, fill your head full of information too. If there's any suspension uh, settings that uh, um, you're curious about or maybe you wanna get uh, a little higher end uh, suspension set up on your bike, we can definitely help you out in that direction too. Or if you've got a, a local uh, suspension guy in uh, your neck of the woods that uh, uh, seems uh, pretty capable, definitely chit chat with them and tell them what you're expecting to get out of it. And, and don't be shy, just say, hey, look, I'm maybe a novice intermediate rider. I'm, I'm no pro rider. I'm not, not running supercross or anything like that. And, and uh, I, I know we all strive to be there, but uh, um, sometimes a little honesty with ourselves will make the bike a, a little better ride for us as well. So hope that helped out, gang. Uh, hopefully see you next time. And uh, um, that was an, another great evening with the dirt bike community. So take care now. Mm -hmm.